Hello again everyone, welcome back to PTAT Chemistry channel. So in this uh, tutorial video, I'll go through these uh, multiple choice questions. These are questions that are associated with the topic on mole and the stoichiometric concept. Uh, so calculations type of questions, which typically in a full multiple choice paper, you don't get uh, all calculations questions because they will take you quite a long time. Anyway, it's very important in the calculation questions that we show our working and think about how to get to the answer and that's what we do in this MCQ tutorial. So here we have a mole of the acid being 0 0.025. We're given the volume of the solution. So very importantly, we need to think of this as a solution and we want to know the hydrogen ion concentration. This is actually a very, very tricky question because if you think about H2SO4, in one mole of H2SO4, it gives you 2 H plus plus SO4 2 minus. They want the hydrogen ion concentrations. Remember that these come from these. If you have one mole of these H2SO4, you get two mole of H plus. So first of all, we have 0 0.025 mole of the acid. So if I said the mole of the H plus is to the mole of the H2SO4, from the balance equation, there are two mole of H plus because that's what I put on top there. Depending on what you label this, if you got it the other way around, it'll be one over two, but this one will be two over one because two mole of H plus, one mole of H2SO4. What is your actual mole of the acid? The acid referred to the sulfuric acid, the actual mole is 0 0.025, and you want the actual mole of the H plus. So the actual mole of the H plus is going to be 0 0.025 times 2 over 1. This is equal to 0 0.050. Of course, your calculator will just show you 0 0.05. Doesn't matter. This is a multiple choice questions. What's the next step? The next step really is what is the concentration? You're given the volume of 25 cn cube. They are all in the same volume. Think about it. They are the same solution that dissociate into H plus. So they are all in 25 cm cube. So therefore, you can imagine that the next step will be uh, part two, the concentration of the acid. You want it in mole per dm cube, so 0 0.050 mole. You divide by the volume, which is 25 cm cube. That means I can times 10 to the minus 3. Something times 10 to the minus 3 means 25 over 1000 is the exact same meaning. And that's because we want to convert cm cube to dm cube. So press that onto your calculator and you get 2 mole per dm cube. And of course, one of the answers here are given to three significant figure. Uh, even though the data is too sig fig, I don't know. There's a bit of a um, appropriate number of significant figure kind of mistake there. But doesn't matter. There's only one answer that fits whatever we want, which is the H plus, not the H2SO4, which is the concentration and not the mole. Be very, very careful there. In the next question, so... We want the sulfite, the sulfite referred to the S2S, S2 minus, sorry. Uh, of course, the other modern kind of spelling would be S U L F I D E. You want the greatest mass. Be very, very careful. This is a question on percentage composition by mass. Percentage composition by mass is in your all level uh, syllabus or in your IGCSE syllabus, whichever board you are doing. You look at the formula unit. So these are mass for one mole. The mass for one mole, even though they put down the mass for one mole is gram, but the very definition for mass of for one mole, the substance is gram per mole. One mole of that substance has a mass of something, that's the MR. So you got to think about what is the percentage of sulfur for the first one, for example. So for the first one, uh, I think it's probably easier if I just label it A. So your percentage of, well, not a percentage, but basically out of, out of 90, gram in one mole how many gram of it is actually in sulfur so there's only one sulfur so it's one times 32 so one sulfur times 32 the mass the relative atomic mass for one sulfur from the predict table divided by 90 because there's the molar mass the mass for one mole the substance and i want it in a 10 gram sample so instead of percentage is out of the 10 gram what is my mass so put it into your calculator and I get 3.6 gram. If I just do that to one decimal place, 
Part B, I have two sulfurs, so that's going to be 2 times 32 divided by 120 times 10 gram. So the logic is that out of the uh, the logic is that out of the total and you you multiply out of the 10 gram, so how much mass of the whole uh, MR is actually made out of sulfur. So you have two sulfur again for the MOS2. is 4.0 gram and then for part d so really we are checking one by one because uh, there's no way of telling which one is the greatest mass unless you actually check them one by one and last but not least i get 13.4 gram so they want the greatest greatest meaning the biggest biggest is therefore 13.4 compared to uh, any of the other one let me just double check that because i don't want to Oh, no, 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 no. You see, I have made a mistake here. It's not 13.4. When I look at the value, I was like a bit curious why I get such a big value. Uh, when I, then when I press on my calculator again, so one small mistake would mean that, you know, I have, uh, I would have gotten, oh, well, oh, I wonder. Ah, I know, okay. I keep on pressing times 100 just now, but it's not percentage, it's out of 10 grams, so be very careful. When I redid, redid it again, I actually get 1.3 gram so the one with the greatest the one with the greatest mass of sulfur will be the 5.3 that's option b there be very careful yeah number three so we're looking at the formula these are molecular formula because it's the actual number of atoms in a molecule a meaning one the very definition of molecular formula is worth two marks for your all-level structured questions. Candidates should be able to define molecular formula as the actual number of atoms in one single molecule. So we're looking at same volume. We're looking at vapor, vapor meaning gas, and we're looking at the same volume as uh, 71 gram of chlorine gas. So first of all, the mole of a chlorine gas is for Cl2 because of structure and bonding. The chlorine exists as a diatomic halogen molecule, diatomic molecule like that, with a single covalent bond. So really, I am given the mass of the chlorine. So I'll do mass over MR, and the MR is for Cl2, so it's 71 over 35.5 times 2 because I've got 2 Cl, and therefore it's just one mole. So what I want is, they have the same volume as this much thing. So one mole of Cl2 is 24 dm cubed for one mole of gas because that is to do with molar volume. So we know that has that much volume. So therefore the mole of, well actually I should probably write down therefore the volume of the phosphorus. I don't know what is the number at the bottom there yet. So I said the volume of the vapor is going to be 24 dm cube as well because it says same volume as this one mole of this chlorine gas according to the question i'm not making these things up so the mole of the px is going to be well i'm given the mass so i should be working with mass over mr and that's going to be equal to 24 over 24 because there's dm cube at the bottom there is dm cube per mole because this is molar volume of the gas, whereas this is the volume of the gas itself, same volume as the 71 gram of uh, Cl2 divided by the molar volume of gas because we're dealing with moles of gases. We're going to relate that to the mass of MR. The mass given in the question is the mass of the phosphorus vapor, so it's one, two, four. Our job really is to find out what is MR. So basically the idea is um, the mole mass of MR is equal to the uh, mole which is given from the volume which is the same as 71 gram of chlorine gas. So make MR the subject and you should hopefully see 124 times 24 over 24. Well, you know, that gives you 124 and there's 124 gram per mole. And you know that one phosphorus has a relative atomic mass from your periodic table of 31. So 1, 2, 4 over 31 will give you 4. So therefore, this is P4 as a molecule. In the next question, so we have ATC and Q of A. They will react with iron. And then uh, when we heat it, they will react with iron until there is no further decrease in volume. 
So A contains however many percent of oxygen. So contains, let me think, uh, around 21% of oxygen. It is the oxygen that will react with the iron. If you think about it, they will react to give you iron 3 oxide and not iron 2 oxide because there's enough oxygen there. So they'll give you iron 3 oxide, Fe3 plus O2 minus. If you think about balancing uh, equation, Fe3 plus O2 minus, we exchange or we cross multiply to bring down the value of the charge. The value of the charge minus 2 is 2, bring it to the other side. The value of the charge is plus 3, so bring the 3 to the other side. This means Fe3 plus, Fe3 plus, there are two of them. So there are three of the O2 minus. The idea is the charges of the cation total. Cancel out the charges, the total charge of the anion. So two of the ion three plus and three of the O2 minus. I got to balance the equation with two and three over two there. So when cool to the original temperature, which volume of gas remains? If I think about the stoichiometric equation, um, uh, this is actually easier than I thought it would be because if your A, if your A contains 21% uh, of oxygen, so the remaining, the remaining gas does not react. So if your remaining gas does not react, so give or take around 79% remains, 79% remains. So we are looking at, we started with 80 cm cube. So 79 over 100, there's your percentage, time 80, uh, 79 times 80 divided by 100, give or take, there's around 63.2%. So it's not obviously the exact answer which is there, but 64 cm cube is as good as it gets. Only about um, one fifth, only about 20%, give or take, uh, reacted with the iron to give you the iron tree oxide, and therefore the remaining ox the remaining gases which are not oxygen does not react. So that would be the 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 63.2 cm cube because I keep on telling you to be very careful with unit, and I was not very careful with unit. I'm multiplying by cm cube, so my final answer would be in cm cube, and that correlates well with whatever the question wants. Question five, so you have one volume of gas X reacts with five volume of oxygen. Very, 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 very uh, specific there. But what is more important is you gotta realize this term gas, and oxygen is a gas at room temperature and pressure, it exists as O2. And since they are gases, we can be thinking about molar volume of gas, which is 24 dm cube per mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure. This is a given, it's a, it's a fact. Uh, it was also given for free in your periodic table, which of course you don't need to refer to because you know it, all right? Um, so let's see, let's balance our equation. So for A, I wonder if there's an easy way to do this. So you will get CO2 plus H2O. If we balance our equation, so there are four hydrogen, so I need two H2O, four hydrogen. I got two oxygen and two oxygen, so four oxygen atoms. Four oxygen atoms would mean I need four oxygen atoms and therefore two O2 molecules. One mole of CH4 reacts to two mole of O2. This means because they are both gases at room temperature and pressure. So this means one volume will react with two volume of oxygen. And therefore, we know that A cannot be the answer because we have one volume reacting with five volume. How about option B? So C2H6 plus O2 will get CO2 plus H2O. Again, we have two carbons, so I'll have two CO2 there. I have six hydrogen, so I need six hydrogen atoms. So I'll have three H2O. I've got two times two, which is four oxygen, three times one, which is three oxygen, altogether seven oxygen, seven over two. So, you know, one volume will react with 3.5 volume of uh, oxygen molecules. So cannot be B again. I'm down to the other two options. If I check C and C is not the answer, that means D must be the answer. Anyway, so balancing question must be done very, very quickly. You must be able to balance it from scratch very, very easily. 3 carbon, so 3 CO2, 8 hydrogen, so 4 H2O, 3 times 2 is 6 oxygen, 4 times 1 is 4 oxygen, 6 oxygen, 
plus four oxygen is ten oxygen. Ten oxygen on the right, and you want ten oxygen atoms. So what you have is five O two molecule. Five times two give you ten oxygen atoms. C is our answer because this is our one mole. You have one mole reacting with five mole. So what you have is one volume reacting with five volume because these are two gases and they both are 24 dnq per mole at room temperature and pressure you can check for d but since we've gotten the answer we can move on this is just one way of showing you that it's important to balance the question very very quickly from scratch without any mistake at all number six we have the mr of cuso4 is 160 this is about water of crystallization so if this is 160 this means there are five water of crystallization so there are five times 18 which is 90 so altogether altogether the mr of cuso4 is 160 plus uh, five of the five of the water molecules so five times 18 which is 90 so the total is going to give me 250 well, actually, I don't need to evaluate anything. But what is the percentage by mass of water? So if you do it from scratch, percentage by mass of water, out of the total MR, what is the mass of the water? So you got 5 times 18. At the bottom, how did I work out the MR? I work out the MR by having 160 plus 5 times 18. And then I will multiply that by 100% in order to get percentage by mass of water. There are five water molecules, so it's not just one water molecule in the water crystallization. That's how I know this wrong because there's no number five in there. And um, there is how I know this one is wrong because there are five water of crystallization because I need to add in five of the 18 uh, MR for each of the water. So it's not just 18, it's actually H2O five times, therefore 18 times five for the total mass of the hydrated copper to sulfate. So this is the best answer there. Uh, and in fact, it's the only correct answer there. Number seven, so we have this aluminium silicate. What are the value of X? Oh, this looks complicated. Um, oh, actually, it's not complicated. We just need to total up. So we are saying that Al2O3 dot 2 SiO2 dot 2 H2O is equal to Al2OHX Si2OY. Let's have a look at this. The aluminium, there are two altogether. Aluminium is okay. Aluminium is okay. Uh, the silicon, you have two silicon because you have SiO2, SiO2, you have H2O, H2O, you have Al2O3. If I sum it up, then I'll get Al2, I'll get Si2, so Si is also okay. Now, in terms of the oxygen, so what can I say in terms of the oxygen? If I sum up all the oxygen, I have three oxygen. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. If you are very good at reading this, you can just say 3 oxygen, and then there are 2 oxygen for each SiO2, multiplied by 2 because you have 2 of it, so 4 oxygen, 2 times 1, which is 2 oxygen. So 2 oxygen plus 4 oxygen is 6, plus 3 is 9 oxygen. The other thing is hydrogen, so you got 2 water molecules, or 2 H2O, so you have 4 hydrogen altogether. I've got to make it into this form, so the hydrogen and the oxygens must be equal in that form. So therefore, it must be OH, four of them, because four hydrogen, four hydrogen, this will give me four oxygen, but I have nine oxygen. So what is my remaining oxygen outside? Since I have nine oxygen, I only have four oxygen here. Uh, the other number which is missing must be five, because four times one is four, plus five give me nine oxygen. So this means x is equal to 4, y is equal to 5. So x equal to 4, y equal to 5. This is a very simple question that looks complicated. Number 8, so you want the concentration. You want the concentration in mole per dm cube. And you have 2.54 gram of iodine. These are I2 that exist as a covalently bonded uh, group 7 molecule so the first thing i would do is work out the mr of i2 so there's one two seven times two that's two five four very very conveniently two five four so hopefully you can see then the concentration of i2 you want it in mole per dm cube so on the top i'll get the mass over the mr so 2.54 over 254 this will be mole 
because this is mass in gram divided by the mr of i2 mass over mr give me mole at the bottom i need dm cube but i do not have dm cube i have 250 cm cube so you can do 250 times 10 to the minus 3 if you're not a big fan of these 10 to the minus 3 you should be able to think about it as 1 over 10 to the 3 which is 1 over 1000 so this is your uh, mathematics and you should be able to and confidently apply this thing whether it's divided by a thousand is the same as time 10 to the minus 3. The idea of writing like this is because it's easier to write and you're supposed to know how to key in your calculator correctly using this format and also this format as well. So anyway, press down to your calculator, do the top bit first in a bracket 2.54 divided by 254. I get 0 0.01 for the top bit. And then divided by bracket 250 times 10 to the minus 3. Or you can do 250 over 1000 correctly and you get 0 0.04. My units does not lie to me. I have done mole mass over MR, which give me mole. I've done volume converted to DMQ, which give me per DMQ down there. 0 0.04 is the correct answer. There's option C there. On to the next one. So the formula of an oxide of uranium is UO2. Uranium is a metal. Oxygen is a non-metal, so we could be thinking about O2 minus, and we have two of it, so therefore minus four total charge. Then you can think about the next step. You only have one of the uranium. If this is minus four, the compound has no charge, therefore it's uranium four plus. Now they want the chloride. Chloride comes from chlorine, is also a non-metal. What are you going to do to balance out the plus four charge with the minus one? Well, you should know how to um, well get the formula for metal and non-metal compound. You can have an exchange of the number, the number meaning the valency, their combining power. Bring down the number to the other side. This is actually cross multiply or actually lowest common multiple from primary school mathematics. The value there is one, so it's just one there. So this means one of the U4 plus. This means Cl minus 4 time. I'm not going to write this all the time, but hopefully you can see that it's going to be UCl4. You need 4 of the minus 1 to balance out 1 of the plus 4. Uh, actually, I didn't change any color. Anyway, so the burning of a hydrogen in oxygen produces water, and which is why hydrogen extinguishes a burning splint with a pop sound, but the fire will not keep on going because you're producing water. What does this tell us about the reaction? Don't forget that this is actually mole ratio, mole, and then this is uh, two moles of H2 reacts with one mole of O2 to give you two mole of H2O. You can also think of it as two hydrogen molecule reacts with one oxygen molecule to give you two H2O molecules. In terms of masses, if you think about in terms of masses, you have two of the H2 molecule. Remember the MR is actually of one substance. It's a gram per mole. For one mole of the substance, the MR is going to be two because there are two hydrogens. One times two give me two. The MR of all two uh, is going to be 16 times two, which is 32. The MR H2 is going to be two times one for the two hydrogen here. And one times 16, add them up together, they will give you 18. But what is going to be your reacting masses? The reacting masses, so two times, there are two of that molecule, each of which is two, so there are four gram, will react with 32 gram, and you have 18 gram for one H2O, you have two H2O, so 18 plus 18, or 18 times two, that's 36 gram. As you can see, the total mass on the left equal to the total mass on the right, this is called conservation of mass because mass is not destroyed, nor created. Uh, you are not doing sorcery, you are doing chemistry. So 36 gram of steam can be obtained from 16 gram of oxygen is completely wrong. You need 32 gram of oxygen. So A is wrong. Two gram of oxygen combined with one gram of oxygen, that's wrong because this is to do with mole. Two mole combined with one mole. So actually that is wrong. It should be mole and it should be mole. Now, two mole of steam can be obtained from one mole of oxygen. This is correct because two mole of steam obtained from one mole of oxygen and two moles of hydrogen. Two atoms of hydrogen. Now, this is wrong because it said two atoms of hydrogen. There should be four atoms of hydrogen combined with two atoms of oxygen. Two atoms of oxygen is one O2 molecule. 
two atoms of hydrogen is one H2 molecule. From your balance equation, there you need two H2 molecule, not one H2 molecule. Be very careful about the use of words. On to the next one. So we have gaseous carbon dioxide. We want the moles per dm cube. We have the masses, which means we need to think about the MR because we are relating to masses. And this is volume. So this is volume of carbon dioxide gas. This is mass of CO2. So we are saying that the mole of the CO2, let me see. Mm. Uh, so this is actually concentration for the gas, okay, but the volume of the gas is 500 cm cube. You want to convert that to dm cube. You want to convert this to mole. So I got to think about the MR of CO2 first. So MR of CO2 is 12 times 1 plus 16 times 2 or 2 times 16. That gives me 44 gram per mole. This is straight from topic 1. When you did diffusion, you got to know the definition of molecular mass simply sum up the individual relative atomic masses that is what is stated in the syllabus candidate should be able to if you're not able to you don't blame anyone okay so the mole of co2 is going to be 4.4 gram over 44 because this is mass over mr i could do everything one step but i guess i should show you um, how to do it step by step first this is going to give you 0.1 mole what happened next is I want the concentration of CO2. So I got the 0.1 mole divided by the volume, converted to dm cube. I multiply by 10 to the minus 3. In fact, I'm going to show you something different. No, actually, I'm going to stick with 10 to the minus 3. You could do 500 over 1000. As long as you could press your calculator correctly, it will be the exact same thing. So 500 over 1000 is the same thing as 500 times 10 to the minus 3. You got to be confident enough uh, with that calculations uh, in that format because it's a mathematics problem so 0.2 mole per dnq is the answer there number 12 so um, they are saying that uh, from this balance equation so the mole of aloh3 is to the mole of h2so4 from the balance equation two mole of it reacts with three mole of it my top bit is on aluminium hydroxide, so there's two mole on top. At the bottom is sulfuric acid, H2SO4, so it's three mole at the bottom. This is from the balance equation based on what I have labeled. Now on the right hand side is my actual mole. I want 0.5 mole aluminium sulfate, and I want to know how many moles of sulfuric acid. Very, very straightforward question. This is the actual mole of sulfuric acid. So make this the subject. You could have gotten this the other way around, this would be the other way around, this would be the other way around because it's based on what you label. It's entirely based on how you label your stuff and follow through what you have done. So move this up there and move this up there and move the two down there because you got to move this up there and then you will get 0 0.5 times 3 because I move this up there, I move the 3 up there and the 2 will come down as a fraction, so it's divided by 2. If you can't do this in one step, you do it in two steps whatever it takes so that you can see the underlying mathematics uh, which is not exactly chemistry this is not concentration this is small so it's 0 0.75 what have i done wrong uh, i thought i did this correctly didn't i do this correctly um uh, let's see i don't know why i don't have the answer here ah i know why i know why I have used aluminium hydroxide and that was a big big mistake uh, the question said aluminium sulfate so you always always gotta read the question very carefully that was a terrible terrible mistake okay it's a good thing this is multiple choice uh you know that i could tell one of the answers is wrong but i would be messed up if this is not a multiple choice question aluminium sulfate there's one mole of it so it's one over three so that goes up three goes up but it's the one that comes down, put that into your calculator, you get 1.5 mole. The answer should be C there. So you see, one small mistake can actually kill off your answer just like that. So be very careful what you're reading. This is aluminium hydroxide. This is a base. This is an acid. So this is a neutralization reaction uh, where you will get a salt 
in this case your salt is aluminium sulfate and you get water which gives you pH 7. On to the next question, so they are saying that which formula is correct for a compound containing silicon. So silicon is in group 4, so all of these are non-metals if you notice them. These are non-metals because it's group 4, group 6, so this is group 4 from the periodic table. Group number comes from the number of valence electrons or the number of outermost shell electrons. There's something from atomic structure, this is group 7 and this is group 5. So all of these are what you classify as non-metals. So we are thinking about non-metals and non-metals. So therefore, we're thinking about covalent bonds between non-metals and non-metals, uh, which is between these partners here. So if we think about silicon, group 4, it wants to share four electrons to go to fully fill out the shell. And therefore, with fluorine, which only share one electron, it should be SIF4 and not SI4F because the silicon share one, the fluorine can only share one. So you need four of the fluorine to share each of the one that the silicon needs. SIH4, that is exactly what we're looking for. Hydrogen needs to share one electron to complete the first shell. And therefore you need four hydrogen, uh, each hydrogen giving, or oh, sorry, not giving, sharing one electron with each of the silicon valence electrons. As for silicon and nitrogen, you could think about silicon will want to share four. Nitrogen will want to share three. So silicon want to share four, nitrogen want to share three. You can think about the LCM, the lowest common multiple, and therefore you swap them around. So you need Si3 and four, which is not SiN5. As for Si2O, that's impossible because you learn this as part of your CAS study. Uh, in your syllabus, it's called silicon 4 oxide, or it's also known as silicon dioxide. It's also known as a component of sand, white sand essentially. So you have Si and O. Silicon need to share four electrons. Oxygen need to share two electrons to complete the outer shell. So you know you swap around your valency and you get two and four. Don't forget that 2 and 4 is not the simplest whole number ratio. So what we can do is we can simplify it to give you 1 is 2. SiO2 is the correct formula and not Si2 or that. Number 14, so how many moles of sodium hydroxide were needed to make up this solution? This is a much, much simpler uh, question. You want 2 dm cube, you want this concentration, so you want the mole. So n equal to Cv, you want the mole of sodium hydroxide, you have the volume of sodium hydroxide, you have the concentration of sodium hydroxide, 5 mole per dm cube, concentration, multiplied by 2 dm cube, the per dm cube and the dm cube cancel out. So what you have then is you just have 10 mole. This is the mole of sodium hydroxide that is required. Very, very straightforward there. Number 15, so very careful here. These are oxygen atoms, not oxygen molecules. Same number of atoms as 16 gram of element X. Uh, 16 gram of element X, 16 gram of element X. And we're looking at atoms. Uh, so we're looking at the mole of oxygen atoms uh, is equal to the mole of X. So if we have 16 gram of X divided by the relative atomic mass, this is for atom not for not mr because it's for atom so that's why they're asking for relative atomic mass and the mole of oxygen is going to be 8 over 16 because this is the relative atomic mass for oxygen atoms read the question very very carefully so what do we have ar equal to make ar the subject so i'll move uh, ar up there and then i'll move the 8 down there and then i'll move the 16 up there so altogether, AR equal to 16 times 16 over 8. You can imagine that 8 times AR is equal to 16 times 16. So move the 8 down there, which is equal to AR. If you can't do it step by step, uh, if you can do it, then cut down the step. So they gave me 32. That is going to be sulfur, most likely. But can't tell that for sure because relative atomic mass is not identity. It's simply an average mass. Number 16, so we have element X forms a gaseous molecule. This is called a diatomic molecule because two atoms of X does that. So now this is to do with one volume of X2. 
combines with one volume of hydrogen to give you two volumes of gaseous hydride. Hydride means combined with oxygen. Combi uh, sorry, not oxygen, sorry. <laughs> combined with hydrogen. So first of all, we have a couple of important things. Gaseous. We are dealing with hydrogen, which is gas. And we are dealing with gaseous. So we are dealing with molar volume of gas being 24 dm cubed per mole. Therefore, volume ratio is equal to mole ratio because of this constant. I'm talking about mole ratio and volume ratio because of this constant. If you think about the mathematics, ratio means something is to something. This constant means that this must be equal because of the ratio. Of course, mole is not volume because mole is equal to volume of gas divided by molar volume of gas. So what do we have? We have x2, one volume, plus one volume of h2, give me two volume of hx. Yeah, because the only way I can get two is if I have two x and I have two hydrogen, so it must be two hx, and therefore it cannot be h2x2, because they will give me one h2x2 from one and one of these, based on these and these, one and one volume to give me two volume hx. It only works with mole ratio like this because all of these are gases. If I have one volume, which is, you know, like uh, one cm cube, one cm cube will give me two cm cube because they are all gases. They all have the same molar gas uh, volume. So this answer here, x must be hx and not hx2 or h2x. It just must be hx because of the balance equation based on the reacting volume of gases. Number 17, you want the highest percentage by nitrogen. You want the percentage by mass. So you got to look at the MR. So the MR is given. Uh, they want the percentage by mass because we are not given however, mass, however much mass we have. So there are two nitrogen. Each nitrogen is 14 relative atomic mass of 14 divided by the MR. So that time 100% give you a value. Uh, the second one, again, I have two nitrogen. Be very careful of your formula. NH4 plus SO42 minus. You're going to need two ammonium. So be very careful of this kind of thing because one mistake means you lost everything. Okay. So let me just evaluate the first two first. I get 35%. I get 21.2%. Uh, might need to squeeze in a bit there. Uh, let's see. C, I have, again, two nitrogen. So 2 times 14 over 60 times 100%. So they give me 47% or 46.7, really. I should probably be consistent and write 46.7. And D is, I got three nitrogen there. So because of three ammonium, so three times 14 over 149 times 100%, uh, just to conclude off. And uh, then I can compare which one has the highest percentage by mass of nitrogen. These are percentage by mass of nitrogen. Look at how many nitrogen atoms you have. Multiply by the relative atomic mass. Divide by the MR already given. You want the percentage by mass. So times 100% to get your answer in percent. This is 28.2. Not too sure if that is too clear. So this is 28.2%. You want the highest. So the highest is going to be the 46.7. Option C there. Next question, one mole of a sample of hydrated. Hydrated means has water of crystallization. This is a sodium sulfide. Sodium sulfide is Na plus S2 minus. As you know, the, the formula will be Na2S. Well, I say as you know, but you should see that, you know, you need two of these in order to balance out the minus two charge from one of these. Therefore, it's Na2S. All of these are Na2S. So I don't think you can get confused by this. Uh, the MR. MR of Na2S is going to be 23 times 2 plus 32 times 1. So there's 78. There's my first step. And what is going to be my second step will be, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, I need to compare mole ratio. So, you know, uh, the mole of uh, water over the mole of Na2S 
Well, let's work out the actual mole of H2O. I got 162 gram of water. So MR of H2O is going to be 18 because 2 times 1 plus 16 times 1 give me 18. I have 162 gram, so 162 over 18. Mass over MR give me the mole of water. Mass of water divided by MR water give me the mass, sorry, the mole of water. Now at the bottom, I have one mole of a sample of hydrated sodium sulfide. If I have one mole, then, well, one mole of these give me this much, 162 gram of that. So 162 divided by 18, there is 9. I was just wasting my time really working this out. Turns out I don't need it because they give me one mole already. This is coming from the hydrated uh, compound. So when it becomes anhydrous, there's just one mole of these because when you lose the water crystallization, you don't lose the identity of your original compound unless it decomposes. So we're looking at 9 mole of water for 1 mole of the Na2S. So that has got to be option D there. Question 19. So we're looking at the same number of molecules as 9 gram of water. So since I have done MR of water there, so we can be thinking about 1, the mole of water is going to be mass over MR. So 9 gram of water over 18, there's 0.5 mole. They want the number of molecules. Ideally speaking, I should convert this to Avogadro constant. So I should say the number of water molecules equal to the mole of water molecules times Avogadro constant, which means 0.5 times Avogadro constant. But since I like to work with mole, the one, the one that has 0.5 mole of molecules will be the same as this mole, and therefore they will have the same number of molecules. So stick with mole, all right? For number two, for step two, I'll check for each and every one of the options. Remember that these are molecules. We are looking at molecules, as I have asterisk here. H2, N2, O2, CO2. We are given masses. So you can think about the MR of H2 is 2. We are, uh, MR of N2 is 14 times 2, which is 28. MR of O2 is 16 times 2, which is 32. And then the MR of CO2 is 12 plus 16 times 2, which is 44. So for option A, the mole of H2 is mass of MR, so 2 over 2 is 1 mole. And as you can see, the mole of H2 molecule is not the same as the mole of 9 gram of water. A must not be the answer. So for option B, the mole of N2, mass of MR, 14 over 28, because the MR of N2, 14 times 2, so I get 0 0.5 mole, and I have 0 0.5 mole of N2 molecules, the same as 0 0.5 mole of H2O in 9 gram, therefore B must be my answer. I'll show you very quickly why C and D are incorrect. By right, in the real exam, once you get to the correct answer, you move on. Uh, but it's important in this kind of exercise that we know what is uh, going on. So that will give you one mole as well, So which is why C is not the answer. But in D, we also get one mole as well. So 44 divided by 44 give you one mole. And again, it's not 0 0.5 mole, not the same as 9 gram of water. Question 20 is balancing equation. Um, this thing doesn't matter so much. This is about balancing equation, the values, how you balance the equation. This is a tricky one to balance because the nitrogen there doesn't just go here, it goes to the NO as well. So the nitrogen there is not just here, it's also here. But the copper, so P copper, here there's no other copper apart from here, there's one copper here. So what I can tell is P is equal to R. Because if I have one copper here, then I'll have one copper here. If I have two copper, there must be two copper. P equal to R. P equal to R. 1 is equal to 1. 2 is equal to 2. 2 equal to 2. 3 equal to 3. There's nothing I can, you know, get from there. Nothing at all. Okay, how about the next thing? Um, there is NO3, but there's NO3 and NO. The next thing I should really be thinking about is not nitrogen, but it's hydrogen. Because this is the only thing with hydrogen. No hydrogen and no hydrogen. This is the only thing with hydrogen. So let's have a look at the hydrogen. For hydrogen, as so you can see, there's Q times 1, which is Q on the left-hand side, Q times 1. Here, there's two hydrogen atoms, 2 times S. Q is equal to 2S. There's your algebra. Q is equal to 2S. Q equal to 2 times 2, so this is okay. But we've got to check for all of them. Q equal to 2S. This is okay. Q equal to 2S. Q equal to 2S. There's nothing that can help me at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> all right, so um, let's check the rest. Um, oh, this is getting hard. Let's check the oxygen. Let's check the nitrogen. Nitrogen is probably easier now. 
This is the only thing with nitrogen, so Q times 1 is Q on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, I have 2 times 2 nitrates, so 2 times 1 is 2. But I got R in front, so it's 2R. But it's not the only nitrogen, I also have T. So 2R plus T. Okay, this might help. Q is equal to 2R plus T, so 2 times 1 plus 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, not helping at all. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 plus 4 is 8, not helping at all. 2 times 3 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, not helping at all. So in the end of the day, I still need to look for oxygen. Aish, okay, this is getting very annoying now. Okay, let's look at oxygen. So I've got 3Q, 3Q on the left. And my oxygen on the right is 6 oxygen, 6 times R, so it's 6R, plus S, because S times 1, plus T, because T times 1 oxygen. Okay, I should probably use my calculator for this. So 3 times Q is 12. Okay, so on the right-hand side, I have 6 times 1, plus 2, plus T, which is 2, which is 10. But 3 times 4 is 12, so I know A is wrong because 3 times 4 is 12, and I get 10 for the entries. This is the really good one to balance this, all right? So let me choose a different color. Uh, 3, time, 3 times 6 is 18, so 6 times 2 is 12. 12 plus 3 is 15, 15 plus 2 is 17. 17 is not equal to 18, so B is wrong. 8. 8 times 3 is 24, so 6 times 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16, 16 plus 4 is 20, but you want 24 on the left-hand side. I'm pretty sure that D is the correct answer, but let's just check now. So 8, sorry, no, 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 uh, where is it? 3Q, so 3 times 8, which is 24, that is on the left. On the right, I have 6 times 3. And then I have 4 for S and I have 2 for that. So 18 plus 4 is 22. 22 plus 2 is 24. So D is the correct answer there. But I knew there was a correct answer because I checked the rest. This was a waste of time. Sometimes you just need to play a bit of algebra instead of balancing from scratch. Twenty-one. So the mass of one mole of chloride. This is a chloride with a metal. So this is about empirical formula, Y and chlorine. If we have the mass uh, of one mole, am I correct? Uh, uh, I don't know, the mass of one mole of a chloride, one mole of a chloride. So we're looking at MR. The MR of that chloride with the metal, so metal chloride. Is going to be 74.5 gram per mole. Uh, what can I say here? Mm. This metal, why is unknown, right? Because they say a uh, metal, they don't say the metal. Mm. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, let us think about this. So we know the relative atomic mass for one chlorine is 35.5. So if, if we have two times Cl, then we will have 35.5 times two, which is 71. And we want 74.5. That means you're looking for something which is 3.5 gram per mole. If you look at the periodic table, something which is 3.5 gram per mole, uh, we don't really have a metal of that mass, so we are not really looking at 2 times Cl at all, because 2 times Cl would mean 74.5 minus 71 is a metal, which is 3.5 gram per mole. None of the relative atomic mass is 3.5 gram per mole for a metal, so we are not looking at these. So these are all 1 chlorine, so if 1 chlorine, then you will be 74.5, minus 35.5 you are looking at the relative atomic mass for oops hang on so we're looking at the 
if one time chlorine so therefore 74.5 minus 35.5 is equal to 39 so how are you going to split the 39 here you have 3y so you use 39 over 3 is 13 the ar of y and do we have any metals where the relative atomic mass is 13 not really so a cannot be the answer how about the next one so we're going to split 39 over 2 because we have 2y and here is 39 over 1 because we have 1y so 39 over 2 is 19.5 we look at the predict table look for relative atomic mass which is 19.5 that shift is more towards the non-metal whereas we are looking at the chloride formed by a metal y so that doesn't make sense if we look at this 39 that is very close in fact that is exact for the relative atomic mass for potassium potassium is a um, relative atomic mass of 39 in the predict table so potassium is group one so uh, when they form ion with chlorine it will become k plus cl minus so kcl as you can see here ycl okay a bit of logical thinking there now the next one what a volume of e10 e10 is this c2h6 uh, has a mass of 20 gram you want equal volume by the way these are gases at room temperature and pressure perhaps you might not have known that uh, mm, you want equal volume and since both are gases since both are gases if you have equal volume if equal volume of gases therefore same mole because they are gases so what can I say um, the mole the mole of uh, 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 what is the mass of an equal volume of propene uh, let's see so the mass the mole of C2H6 equal to the mole of C3H6 because if both are gases then that is true but then not both are gases now we are dealing with masses so on the left hand side we have the mr of c2h6 so 12 times 2 plus 6 times 1 that is 30 and on the right hand side we have mr of c3h6 which is 12 times 3 plus 6 times 1 which is 42 so at the bottom there is 42 at the bottom here is 30 i have a volume has a mass of 20 gram because this is mass so it's 20 gram mass of mr for the ethane i want the mass of the propane so mass of the c3h6 bring this up there get your expression before you press anything into calculator very very important that you learn that skill rearrange to get everything you need very clearly first before you press a calculator so there's option c there now, question 23, you haven't really done a lot of cracking yet, at least not at this point. But the idea is which one produce the largest volume of product from one mole of hydrocarbon. These are all at same temperature and pressure. Look at these. These are all gases. Let me just highlight it very quickly. Gas, 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 gas. One mole gives you four moles of gases. So four moles of gaseous products now this one gives you 2 plus 1 which is 3 moles of gaseous product and this one is 1 plus 1 and 1 plus 2 respectively so they give you 2 moles and 3 moles 2 moles of products and they give you 3 moles of products so which one will give you the largest volume of products remember that all of these are gases the molar volume of gases are 24 dm cubed per mole of gas so if i all start from one mole of this hydrocarbon and you get greater moles of gaseous products therefore you get greater number or greater volume uh, for the gaseous molecules so therefore we are looking at this four which is option a there 24 this is a very very interesting question because uh, well let me show you why it is interesting all right so when you have cxhy which these are CXHY. Let's do a bit of algebra in terms of balancing equations, in terms of algebra. 
Let's see. If we want to balance this equation, our job is to find out what is x and y. We'll get CO2 and H2O. So there are x number of carbon, so that must give us x CO2. There's y number of hydrogen, so this is H2, so it must give us y number of hydrogen, so it's y over 2 times 2. It's a primary school mathematics, it will give you y hydrogen atoms that balance out. What is your total oxygen atoms here? Your total oxygen atoms is going to be 2 times x, which is 2x, plus 1 times y over 2, which is y over 2. This is oxygen molecule with an O2. So therefore, you need to halve whatever things you have on the other side. This is an addition, so you need to do your, your uh, expansion of your bracket very carefully. Half times 2 is 1, so it's just x. Half times y over 2 is y over 4. So that means the expression I get there is x plus y over 4, just like that. Alright, so I'm going to wrap this out because this is an expression that you could get by thinking from scratch. It's just a mathematical problem. Now what is this problem here? Whatever reacted forms the product. So if I have the volume at the start, I have 20 cm cube, I have excess of oxygen, then the volume at the end, the volume at the end, I get 60 cm cube of oxygen and both volumes are measured RTP. Uh, so what can we say? So 20, 20 of these give you 60 of that. Remember your volume ratio is the same as small ratio. So the volume ratio, 20 reacted fully, 60 is formed completely. Divided or simplest ratio, I should say the term simplest ratio simplest ratio and these are gases and because these are gases volume ratio is equal to mole ratio because they are gases only work for gases this is one mole this is well it's not one mole it's a uh, one mole reacts with x plus y over four give you x mole and y over two mole this is a liquid at room temperature and pressure but this is a gas gas and gas so 20 over 20 is one 60 over 20 is 3. So what does this tell you about x? x is 3. Because for 1 mole of CXHY, you get 3 CO2. If x is 3, there's only one answer. Oh, no, there's two answers. Oh, so which one can it be? Uh, let me think. Uh, oh, I know. Sorry, this is not a very good question for you. Alkene. Alkene means carbon-carbon double bond, and you will learn eventually in organic chemistry. This will give you CnH2n formula. Because you have this double bond, it means you have two lesser hydrogen. If you have alkane, this will be alkane. I'm sorry this question came up, but uh, it will make more sense when it comes to organic chemistry. This is in, whereas this is n, so the answer must be a there because it's alkene. But this is how you get to 3 carbon by thinking about reacting ratio. You don't really need uh, this particular formula like this. You can be thinking just how many carbon you have should give you how many mole of CO2 just like that without even needing this algebraic expression. 25. So meta fuel is the fuel used in camping stove. What is the equation for its complete combustion? Balancing equation. You don't get carbon. You don't get carbon monoxide. You don't get carbon monoxide, there's only one answer. Complete combustion gives you CO2 and H2O. End of story. Twenty-six ammonium salts on heating sodium hydroxide give you ammonia gas. This is your paper tree or whatever paper you call it, but it's a practical component. It's a test for NH4+, whatever that comes from your theory, uh, you got to know in practical. Whatever that comes from practical, you got to know in your theory. This is a bit tricky. Mm, 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 mm. From which ammonium salt can the greatest mass of ammonia? Oh, this is very tricky. Um, let's see. Um, when you have NH4+, plus, plus OH-, minus, uh, the OH- minus will accept the H plus and this one donates the H plus. So this is acting as an acid. This is acting as a base. It's pretty much like a neutralization reaction, uh, but it's not really an acid. Uh, so therefore, after it loses the H plus, it just becomes NH3. 
and after the OH minus accepts or receives a H plus, they recombine to give you H2O. Anyway, the more so you can see one mole of NH4 plus give you one mole of NH3. The greatest mass of NH3 comes from the greater the mole. If you have more mole, then you will have greater mass because mass of a MR is equal to the mole. So if you have greater mole, if you have greater mole of ammonia, uh, the MR is the same, right? So if you have greater mole, if this is bigger, then if the mole is bigger, the MR is constant, then the mass will be bigger. So we're looking at if the mass, you want the bigger mass, you want the bigger mole because the MR is constant. So find the mole of ammonia, which come from the mole of NH4+. At the moment, you look at there are three NH4+, three times NH4+, in one formula unit. If you have 0 0.5 mole, so what is the mole of NH4+. If you have one mole of it, then you have three of these, three mole of it. But you have 0 0.5 mole, so it's actually 0 0.5 multiplied by 3, which is 1.2. I'm sorry, not 1.2, but 1.5. Don't know why I did that math there uh, incorrectly. So that is 0 point, sorry, 1.5 mole of uh, ammonium ion, and therefore it will give me 1.5 mole of NH3. Moving on to the next one. So here you have NH4 plus twice, so it's 0 0.5. Multiply by 2, they will give you 1.0 mole of ammonium ion, and therefore they will get um, 1.0 mole of NH3. Moving on to the next one, let's alternate to blue color again. So 1.0, you only have 1, so 1.0 times 1 is 1.0. And last but not least, if I have this, so option D there uh, will be 1.0 times 1 of the ammonium salt. Yes, you get a nitrate, nitrate can give you NH3 but you need aluminium. So no aluminium, no aluminium uh, metal, therefore no NH3 from NO3 minus, which means your NH3 come from NH4 plus and therefore it's just one of the NH4 plus in one mole. So they just give you one mole. So the greatest mass of ammonia come from the greatest mole of ammonia, uh, which come from the greatest mole of NH4 plus, which is why the answer there must be option A. 27, what is the ratio of the volume? Volume of 2 gram of hydrogen. So there's H2 as a gas and you have methane. Methane is CH4 as a gas. You're looking at a room temperature and pressure. So molar volume of gas is 24 dm cubed per mole. Um, 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 okay. So first of all, the mole of H2, given the masses, I'm given the mass, so it's mass of MR. It's 2 over 2 and not 1 because hydrogen exists at H2, so there's one mole. Now, if I have the mole of CH4, again, mass of MR, so this gives me 16 over 16 because the MR of CH4 is 12 plus 4 times 1. There's a very, very elementary calculation of MR, sum up the individual relative atomic masses as you did in the diffusion topic in states of matter under uh, well, kinetic particle theory, topic 1. All right, so there is one mole. You have one mole of this into one mole of these. These are gases, so they both have the same molar volume. One mole of a gas occupies the same volume at room temperature and pressure, given for free in periodic table. Supposed to know this as part of your case study to define molar volume of gas. Same mole means same volume because they are gases at room temperature and pressure. There's only one answer, which is one to one, because same mole of gases, gases. On to the next question, so we have strontium and chlorine. Uh, we're looking at a formula of strontium chloride. So this is very much an empirical formula kind of calculation question. So strontium, the mass is 264. This one is 219. If we want the empirical formula, the, the, the definition is the simplest ratio of atoms. The simplest ratio of atoms. So if I label this mole, I would divide this by 35.5. I do not divide by 71 because it's the simplest ratio of atoms. So looking at the predict table. So the relative atomic mass for strontium is 88 from the predict table. We should really evaluate this value. So 264 divided by 88. That give me 3 exactly. 213 divided by 35.5. That give me 6. 
Don't forget we want the simplest ratio. Simplest ratio means divide by the smallest number. So 3 over 3, 6 over 3, this gives me 2, this gives me 1. So therefore 1 strontium and 2 chlorine. Strontium chloride, just like that. These are based on the data. You cannot always say group 2 chlorides like these because these are based on the data. So in this experiment, these are the data given. Therefore we need to use these calculations. We might be guided by the fact that strontium is in group 2. We might think this is the answer. But that is not always the case because it really depends on the data. Be very careful about it. Yeah. Question 29. Um, so we're looking at neutral solution. So all of these are sodium hydroxide, all of them will neutralize sulfuric acid. If we look at the balance equation, sodium hydroxide Na plus OH minus plus H2SO4, then we'll get sodium sulfate where you have Na plus SO4 2 minus. So you will need 2 Na and therefore uh, Na2 SO4 because you need 2 Na plus to balance out the charge of 1 SO4 2 minus and you also get water and because of 2 Na there you need the 2 in front of NaOH to balance the equation and you get 1 sulfate and you get H2 and H2 and 2 oxygen so you need 2 H2O in order to balance that equation so 2 H2O there so if we look at this mole ratio, 2 mole reacts with 1 mole. So we really want 2 mole reacts with 1 mole. So what can I say? I mean, uh, let's work out the mole of NaOH required over the mole of H2SO4. From the balance equation, 2 mole of NaOH requires 1 mole of sulfuric acid. And then at the bottom there will be 20 times 10 to the minus 3 to convert Cm3 to Dm3. Or you can do divide by 1000. The big capital M stands for mole per dm cube, concentration in mole per dm cube times volume in dm cube, and then I need the actual mole of NaOH. So you can find out the mole of NaOH, uh, actual mole that reacts. Bring all of this up there. So 2 over 1, or 2 times 20 times 10 to the minus 3, times 0.5, I get 0 0.02 mole. Now each of these is in cm cube, so what I can do is I can do 20 times 10 to the minus 3 or I can do 20 over 1000 times 0.5 I get 0 0.01 mole That is for A and that is how I know A cannot be the answer For B, I have 10 over 1000 times 0.5 mole So 10 over 1000 times 0.5 mole per dm cube, sorry So that gives me 0 0.005 uh, or 5 times 10 to the minus 3. So in my calculator, it should show me 5 times 10 to the minus 3, which is equal to this thing here, which is not this. So again, B is not the answer. C, 40 over 1000 times 1 1.0. So that gives me 0 0.04 mole. And again, that is not 0 0.02, so that can't be the answer. I think the last one must be the answer because the other three are not the answer and this actually give me 0 0.02 mole which is the mole of NaOH that will neutralize this much mole of sulfur acid based on the balanced stoichiometric equation. Question 30, finally the last question in this tutorial has been long enough actually. Anyway, so they want to produce one more 1.5 mole of carbon dioxide. They just need the mole of phosphoric acid. Straight away, look at your balance equation. So I have phosphoric acid. I want carbon dioxide. Well, actually, I have carbon dioxide. So we're looking at comparing these two. If I just put this on top, it really does not matter which way around you put them in, as long as they are the two things which I have information on and I label them as such. On top is the phosphoric acid, H3PO4. Two mole of it on top. And then at the bottom is the mole of CO2, it's 3 mole there. And then on the right hand side is the actual mole that get produced or the actual thing that happens. I produce 1.5 mole of CO2. What is my actual mole of sulfuric, not sulfuric, phosphoric acid that reacted? So H3PO4 reacted. So my mole of H3PO4 reacted. Bring this up there. So 2 over 3 times 1.5. I get one mole. In fact, it should be 1.0 mole to maintain with the idea of appropriate number of significant figure. All right, so that's the end of this tutorial. So these are a bunch of multiple choice questions involving calculations. 
I've tried to show you that you know um, maintaining this kind of format where I label things uh, things could be done rationally and also logically and stepwise uh, uh, maintain that sort of accuracy very important to label your stuff so that you are not lost very easily I hope that helps uh, to address some of the questions some of them are confusing some of them are straightforward so you should be able to identify whether it's straightforward or not uh, by thinking about the strategy involved all right thank you for watching don't forget to click the button on the bottom right subscribe to the channel uh, share the channel widely with other people you think it might be helpful for and uh, yeah see you in the next tutorial video